It is now Friday. Now came the time for the clash between good and evil, heaven and hell. The crucifixion of Jesus is both the most horrific moment in human history and humanity's only hope. That's why we call the Friday before Easter, Good Friday. Jesus' followers were still too weak to understand, so they scattered. The religious elite carried out their plot. The political leaders passed the buck. And in the end, they discarded Jesus for the sake of convenience. The crowds gawked. Two thieves hung on either side of a man whose crime was hard to comprehend. The place card above his head announced with biting sarcasm, King of the Jews. That must have attracted some attention. Because the process of crucifixion is foreign to our experience, it is easy to overlook how terribly painful this method of death was. It could take days for the crucified person to die from a combination of asphyxiation and exposure. People were hung on a cross in a position that forced them to use their arms to lift their body weight in order to draw breath, causing the nails driven through their wrists and feet to tear their flesh. God's condemnation of our sin in the flesh of Jesus was signified by the physical pain our Lord endured on the cross. At the same time the Romans were nailing Jesus to the cross, the Father was pouring our wrath upon Christ. Yet we cannot limit Jesus' experience of his Father's wrath to bodily pain. Our Savior also suffered spiritually as God punished the sin of his people in his Son, as Matthew 27, 46 reveals. In fact, the physical suffering of the crucifixion was nothing compared to the God-forsakenness Jesus experienced. Reckoning the sin of his children to Christ on the cross, the Father cursed Jesus in our place. After centuries of passing over his people's transgression, God satisfied his wrath, pouring upon Jesus his anger over the sins of his elect. In Jesus offering up of himself as a substitute, the Father lays upon him all the curse of his covenant with Israel. Now we know of seven things Jesus said from the cross, including the pronouncement of forgiveness for the soldiers, provision for the care of his mother, and a plea for something to wet his parched mouth. But the last words on that last day of his natural human life were the most important. It is finished. Now this was not a cry of resignation or surrender. It was a shout of victory that all that God had planned for the restoration of sinful human beings were now accomplished. Now there could be justification, redemption, reconciliation. All that needed to be done for the debt and scar of the sin had been done. Forgiveness was now free. All that remained was for Jesus to step out from the shadow of death, which he would easily do after a few days. But first, the disciples had time to search their hearts for how something good could be found in something so bad. And the enemies of God disappeared into darkness of their own duplicity. The darkness cries out against the blackness of our sin and testifies to the tremendous cost to God of our redemption. So on this Good Friday, let us never forget the price that Jesus Christ paid on the cross so that we all can be free.